The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining us here at Christ our Savior Lutheran Church in Holland, Michigan for the whole Council of God on this November the 30th. We'll begin in uh, the book of Revelation, the ninth chapter, begin at the 22nd verse and go through the 11th chapter. So let's hear God's word together and pray. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Please show me now your ways, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Give us life, O Lord, according to your word, and we shall declare your greatness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We begin at the 10th chapter. Chapter 9, verse 22 is chapter 10, verse 1. So... The 10th and 11th chapter today, we begin at the 10th chapter, the angel and the little scroll. Then I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, wrapped in a cloud with a rainbow over his head, and his face was like the sun, and his legs like the pillars of fire. He had a little scroll open in his hand, and he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the land, and called out with a loud voice like a lion roaring. When he called out, the seven thunders sounded. And when the seven thunders had sounded, I was about to write, but I heard a voice from heaven saying, Seal up what the seven thunders have said, and do not write it down. And the angel whom I saw standing on the sea and on the land raised up his right hand to heaven and swore by him who lives forever and ever, who created heaven and what is in it, the earth and what is in it, and the sea and what is in it, that there would be no more delay, but that in the days of the trumpet call to be sounded by the seventh angel, the mystery of God, would be fulfilled just as he announced to his servants, the prophets. Then the voice that I had heard from heaven spoke to me again, saying, Go, take the scroll that is open in the hand of the angel who was standing on the sea and on the land. So I went to the angel and told him to give me the little scroll. And he said to me, Take and eat it, and I will make your stomach bitter, but in your mouth it will be sweet as honey. And I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel and ate it. It was sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. And I was told, you must again prophesy about many peoples and nations and languages and kings. So far the word. In chapter 10, John describes his prophetic commissioning. On the one hand, the content of John's prophecy is bitter, for it reveals God's wrath against the hostile world. On the other hand, the word he brings from God is the sweetest possible message, for it delivers Jesus' salvation to many people. We pray, Holy Lord God, I recognize that your bitter anger over my sins is justified and that I fully deserve your punishment. Nevertheless, Christ assures me in the sweet gospel that he has paid for my sins and removed all judgment from me. Strengthen me in this faith. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We continue now into chapter 11, the two witnesses. Then I was given a measuring rod like a staff, and I was told, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there. But do not measure the court outside the temple. Leave that out, for it is given over to the nations, and they will trample the holy city for 42 months. And I will grant authority to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days, clothed, in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stands before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone would harm them, fire pours from their mouth and consumes their foes. If anyone would harm them, this is how he is doomed to be killed. They have the power to shut the sky that no rain may fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have the power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they desire. And when they have finished their testimony, the beast that rises from the bottomless pit will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city that symbolically is called Sodom and Egypt, where their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, some from the peoples and tribes and languages and nations will gaze at their dead bodies and refuse to let them be placed in a tomb. And those who dwell upon the earth will rejoice over them and make merry and exchange presents because these two prophets had been a torment to those who dwell on the earth. But after the three and a half days, 
a breath of life from God entered them, and they stood up on their feet, and great fear fell on those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies watched them. And at that hour there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake, and the rest were terrified and gave glory to God of heaven. The second woe has passed. Behold, the third woe is soon to come. So far the word. Using the figure of twin witnesses, John describes the response of a hostile world to the preaching of God's word. Though ample opportunity is given for people to receive the blessings of repentance and the gospel, most choose to reject the church and persecute it. However, the apparent triumph of the gospel's enemies is never the last word. Jesus promises to stand true. Those remaining faithful unto death will be given the crown of life. We pray. Lord, be our light when worldly darkness veils us. Lord, be our shield when earthly armor fails us. And in the day when hell itself assails us, grant us your peace, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Continuing now at verse 15 of chapter 11, the seventh trumpet. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who sit upon their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, who is and who was, for you have taken your great power and began to reign. The nations raged, but your wrath came, and the time for the dead to be judged, and for rewarding your servants, the prophets and saints, and those who fear your name, both small and great, and for destroying the destroyers of the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple. There were flashes of lightning and rumbles and peals of thunder and earthquake and heavy hail. So far the word. John describes the transition from Satan's temporary rule of the world to the consummation of God's reign. For now people can refuse to obey God, but such resistance will someday be met with an irresistible outpouring of wrath and judgment. Christ's people need not fear that day. Instead, they may long for the day when God will be all in all and perfect harmony will again prevail. We pray. And when the flight is fierce, the warfare long steals on the ear the distant triumph song, and hearts are brave again and arms are strong. Alleluia, alleluia, amen. We now continue in prayer on this 30th day of the month. We give thanks to God for St. Andrew, the apostle. St. Andrew, Peter's brother, heard John's cry, Behold the Lamb of God, and he followed Jesus. Thank you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. O oh, merciful Father, you have wounded your own son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind, and those dying, and all, and all those we now name to you in our hearts. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will and sustain them into the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O oh Lord, and whatever else you know we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.